Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we have a 2012 Land Rover, Range Rover, uh, with a 5 liter GDI engine in it. It's the LR3. And the concern is it comes up with a restricted performance code. Well, it just went away. Let's see if it'll show it. Yeah, press OK. It's got low fuel level, but that's not the point. Restricted performance and the check engine light was on but it had no codes <laughs> which was i gotta say that's a first for me no codes in anything but <clears throat> i'm midway through my diagnosis i'll be upfront about that immediately i've already done a couple of tests and i want to show you what i've got going right now but first let's go ahead and recreate the symptom hopefully we can do it because this only happens when it's cold it's a very hard start it has an oscillating rpm let's see if we can catch it all in the act right now <laughs> it's a range it's a rover so come on there you go beautiful it did it so it's 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 struggling to stay alive and it has an oscillating rpm and here are the codes, right? Well, this is because of my, my testing. This is not, I've never had any other codes for this. So I did have um, these codes only because of my testing. But what led me to this was taking a look at live data. Uh, being familiar with um, certain GDIs, like say the, um, the Mini Coopers that they have the recall for the high pressure fuel pumps. I wanted to take a look at fuel pressure and um, that was my first, you know, thing that I wanted to look at on top of, you know, uh, metering devices that control fueling, like mass airflow and this and that. But the first thing I really went to was fuel. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and pull up the live data. It's idling now perfectly and it will, it, I will turn it off and from here on out, it'll stay idling good. It won't act up again. only when it's cold so let's go check out our fuel and we have a fuel rail pressure of 2430 that is sky high fellas that is not normal um, let's take a look at something else it shows fuel rail pressure desired it has rich trims on there got seven percent of fuel so it is low fuel but not nothing crazy I do not get any kind of live data for for um, the, the regulating valve or the metering valve on those things uh, there is no no um, data pit on that I could look it up I, you know <laughs> I could look through the whole list you, you will not see it uh, it's one of the things that I didn't like about it because you know it's, it's good to know whether it's something of a of a metering issue, say the mass airflow is overreading, it's going to want more fuel, right? It's going to say, let's put the regulation up. And um, well, I didn't have all that. At this point, I wanted to rule out an issue with the sensor. So what I did was disconnect the fuel, the low side fuel uh, pressure fuse and uh, let it die and then turn the key on with the fuse installed again. And I saw a solid 100 PSI which is what specs calls for. So my low side is good and the sensor was good. Now, immediately I thought to myself, it's gotta be the fuel pumps. Uh, the fuel pumps house the regulator, the regulation valves into it, uh, into these uh, fuel pumps. But then the shop owner came back to me and he said, they already put pumps in this thing. And I'm like, oh crap. So that's where we're gonna have to start digging in and, and seeing what's going on. And I'll, I'll be straightforward. I called a tech support group I won't mention any names. And I asked them, well, what tests can I do to uh, narrow down whether it's the pumps, the new pumps, or if it's something else? And unfortunately, I didn't get any, any other tests. They told me, check this. I mean, replace this, replace the sensor, replace the pump, or replace uh, the, the timing, the cam. You know check the timing and whatnot everything was you know over you know a certain amount of labor going into it it, it wasn't just like a quick thing I, I asked them if if they're 
was any more tests that I could do and he was like no you're just gonna have to replace it and I was really really let down by that um, but I did ask if these uh, regulation valves and these high pr pressure fuel pumps are normally closed valves or normally open because every car is different uh, I didn't find that in service info and the one good thing that I really got out of that phone call was that these are normally closed valves so something rang uh, a light went off and, and I said you know what let me disconnect one of the fuel pumps at a time and see where it drops and see if they match one at a time so that's exactly what I did I let the car idle lifted it up disconnected one of the fuel pressure the high pressure fuel uh, pressure regulators and it went down to about 1100 psi and um, obviously it set off the light and, and all that and, and it you know it once I reconnected it that circuit stays off until you do a key off and key on so in case you, anybody was wondering once you disconnect that line that those those wires to the high pressure fuel pump regulator or if there's an open circuit it will cut off the circuit completely that's the strategy it will just cut off that circuit uh, for the remainder of that drive cycle so I reconnected it it didn't come back up to 20 something hundred psi I uh, had to turn off the key turn it back on and it went back up lifted it up again and disconnected the other fuel pressure regulator and it was within about 80 psi as the other one disconnected so it was about 11 80 psi so i'm thinking my valves aren't stuck open these these uh, even though they're brand new pumps I, I wasn't going to trust that they were good but at least that's a test that we can do for those of you who have never done it before i know it's probably not a um, orthodox test i haven't seen it mentioned anywhere but it was something that you know it, it holds true with normally closed regulation valve pumps so uh, i hope that's helpful uh and where does that lead me to there's an issue with timing the fuel pump timing there's a certain kind of timing that you're supposed to have on those things and sometimes it might not set a code obviously it didn't set a code on this one and um, that's where we're headed we got the timing tools I'm going to do be as minimally invasive as possible because to do the whole thing would be a huge job I may have no choice anyway because if it is out of time the whole thing's gonna have to come apart and we're going to have to put this thing in time. Um, but I'm suspecting that the fuel pump cam is out of time and causing a, uh, an excessive pressure uh, into the system, you know, and, and uh, causing my heart start, causing my ridiculously high pressure. Uh, it's not the regulation valves. I've already ruled that out by doing like a, kind of like a relative, uh, it's kind of like the relative compression test of high pressure fuel pumps right you're, you're looking for you're, you're you're comparing banks you know that's I love that you know if those of you who have a, a single fuel pump you you're not gonna have that luxury unfortunately um, unless it was mechanically stuck open if you disconnect it and it stays sky high you already know it's mechanically stuck open but either way that would that would be very very difficult to to discern whether it was the high pressure fuel pump regulator stuck open or if it was a timing issue too so but either way um as for wondering whether the duty cycle to the regulation valves remained the same between both sides i assume that it did because of how close they match if there was a discrepancy between the two i would have gone ahead and sculpt both sides and, and made sure they were exactly the same duty cycle so for any of you wondering that's that was my you know thought process on that so where does the video go from here um, I'm gonna take this thing apart and um, I've got other things lined up but that's more, more programming so I, I have some time to take this thing apart and uh, make sure that it actually is out of time and then obviously do the repairs I w I'm obviously not gonna be doing the entire repair process or the opening of it as soon as I get it open I'm gonna put it in time uh, the crank on time and then see if the fuel pump timing tool goes into the slot the way that it should or not. And um, 
we'll go ahead and uh, keep you guys posted. Uh, thanks for sticking around so far. All right, fellas, we are underneath the vehicle and it is now in top dead center. To put this thing in top dead center, the right way is to install this tool, this special tool right here. Uh, let me see if you guys can see this, one second. Uh, that's the special tool right there. It is where the crankshaft position sensor goes. And there's only one position in which it would allow, allow you to go in there. There's a large, slightly larger notch on the flywheel that will allow you to put it on top of that center. I'm sorry, install it when it's on top of that center. And also, another um, little pointer that it is on top of, that, top of that center is, if you look at the crank pulley, I, I put a white mark on there, but if you look at the crank pulley, see if I could uh, zoom this in well. There's like three little tri little little diamonds on there. It's a little mark. So that's another little indicator. And here is where our fuel pump cam is at. And as you can see, the, uh, I guess you could say the slot is parallel to the ground. Um, this slot right here is parallel to not only the top of this um, hole, but also to the ground, right? If you look at the special tool, and we put this like this, it is not parallel. It's got a big old diagonal to it. So if we were to install this tool, like so, you know, I'm just putting it for illustration purposes. Uh, it's parallel to the ground. It would be very diagonal, not parallel to the ground, like the slot of the cam so if I try to install this tool, it will stick out slightly. It just will not install all the way and I do apologize for the lack of focus. I'm gonna have to manually focus it real quick. There it is. And it just will not go in all the way. It cannot. If I was to line it up with the slot, this pointy part faces up, it will never go in. So. I do not know how far they'll go with it. I do believe this is a timing cover and oil pan out job in order to put this thing in time, re uh, release the tensioner, um, see what damage there is. This thing jumped time for a reason. It's either a, a broken guide or a very loose chain. And I haven't tried to see how much slack there is because it's very hard to see in there but I'm convinced this thing jumped time because of one of those some kind of mechanical failure now who knows if they'll go for it but I will keep you guys updated and um, thanks for sticking around so far <laughs> and I hope it's been useful information so far a little bit of backstory on this uh, vehicle that I forgot to mention was uh, it had an oil starvation this is actually a used engine that was installed and it's, it, they replaced the fuel pumps in, in an attempt to remedy this situation. And I can see why, because quite frankly, let's face it, I almost did the same thing. I made the same call. I said, you know, it's gotta be those regulators, but wow, you could have imagined my surprise when they told me that those are new pumps. Um, it, it, was, it was a bad call on my part. And then, you know, there's no excuse for that, but um, on the bright side, we have found the root cause of the, of the issue and uh, we're going to leave it up to uh, the client to see whether they want to fix it or not. So we got the approval to uh, inspect the, the chain to see if it has any slack before going any further and uh, we went ahead and took off the timing cover and this is what we found. Let me go ahead and uh, zoom in for you guys. I do apologize for the shaking and that right there whoops that right there is the fuel pump chain and check out all that slack right there so yeah root cause found and then on top of that we have on the passenger side this chain here passenger side bank the chain is even making contact with this oil jet over here. 
But let me see if I could get a good picture. Ton of slack. So, and another thing that I found was this here. This oil pipe right here. Totally off of its connection. Uh, upon doing some research. At first, I'm not going to lie. I totally thought it was an oil feed tube and was about to... Um, and was thinking, you know, this thing's been running without oil uh, going up to the heads. But uh, looking at the diagrams, I'll, po I'll go ahead and post it. It is an oil evacuation tube. So this right here, when you pop off the oil cap, you see that tube that comes up here. That allows for an oil change to be done without having to take off the drain plug. That is the tube that goes down to where it's disconnected now. It is an oil evacuation tube. It is not necessarily an uh, oil pump output tube. So um, it's not like it's been running without oil going to the heads or anything like that. Uh, either way, this is going to require an oil pan down in order to change that chain. Um, all the chains have to be removed in order to get that chain out. And it is, it is a, a hefty procedure and uh, I don't know if they'll go ahead and do it. it it adds a lot more work and labor to this already uh, fairly decent diagnosis um, it does have a lot of other oil leaks I'm not sure where they're going to go with this this was supposed to be the engine to repair the, uh, the first engine I don't know if I mentioned it earlier but just in case I'll go ahead and restate that this engine was put in because the engine, the original engine had oil starvation and uh, I guess it locked up on them and they put this engine and turns out well the chains are stretched even though there's no noise there's no there was no codes there was none of that stuff so uh, pretty interesting to find but I would say it's a little bit surprising a little bit surprising not too much just a wee bit surprising. Um, I'll keep you guys updated. See if they'll approve going any further or not. I have no idea if they will. Uh, there's just like the timing cover uh, covers the front. There is also another cover in the rear that needs to be removed. That is uh, without removing that plate. Forget it. You're not getting that oil pan out. All right. So we got the approval to remove that oil pan. And in order to do that, that engine has to come out and whatnot. I went ahead and did all that stuff without filming anything. Now I could show you that it is in time before we go ahead and put this sucker in there, cover it up and put it in. So here we go. We've got new chains, new tensioners, new guides. We're going to put a new crank bolt on there. It's required. It's a torque to yield bolt. New uh, diamond encrusted washer on both ends there. But anywho, you can see that our timing tool sits flush there it is no longer parallel to the floor it is where it should be and our crank bolt the notch is down in the six o'clock position where it should be and you can see the cutter link way in there lines up with the mark that yellow colored link that's the one we're supposed to line up along with this blue one over here Let's see if you guys can see that yeah all the way at 12 o'clock position there are some other timing marks here we have this one we're supposed to line up with the timing uh, guide the chain guide and also this one as well along with these up here we're supposed to line it up with that notch there that one with that notch and finally this one with this notch and that one with that notch so it is in time and yeah, I've got all the old parts there. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these. I've only done one of these once. It was a five liter, but it was an 06, not a 2011. But yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> and uh, it's, a, it's a heavy job, I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's a lot of stuff going on in there. Just... But anywho, uh, I'm glad uh, they went for it. And we're gonna see this through to the end, which which is pretty awesome. I love doing that. Um, stick around. We're going to see the final results. How many PSI this thing should be running. And no more restricted performance. So 
I'll catch you guys soon. All right, fellas, we have seen it through to the end, and it is a, a glorious thing because, man, it's it is nice to see the final outcome um, after all that work. <laughs> uh, those of you, if, if you're watching here in the general public, if you hear about fuel pressure issues, it may consist of removing your engine. Just remember that. Uh, this is proof here. Uh, I hope this was useful. I'm going to show you guys some live data. I've been studying it. I've been driving it for a while, filled it up. We've got no lights on the dash. Uh, that's certainly always a nice sight to see. Uh, no complaints there. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys some live data here. I've noticed a couple things that the fuel rail desired it, it's more like a couple of templates it's not like it's not like BMW that what is desired is what's going to be actual so like at idle if it wants to cut fuel it just says zero you know but if if this was really an issue this would be going way rich I mean look at the trims they don't look bad um, if I rev it up a little it defaults to 1450 and then this starts to come up a bit but that also you know the mass airflow has say as to how much pressure the high side will give it's not just strictly desired you know it's not going to go necessarily to 1450 it'll go depending on the load so as i rev it up it it raises accordingly i know that seems like common knowledge but you know we um uh, let's never assume that everyone knows everything that there is to know about all of these systems every system is different every brand every make and model you never know what you're going to deal with so uh, it's it's not too bad for my first time uh not to not to brag or anything but you know that's one of the things that we have to uh, endure in this industry sometimes we work on something for the very first time you know and and i've pulled an engine like this before but it not like this, not a 2012. It was like an 06. It was not even close to the amount of work this one took. Um, totally different animal. And, um, but still, that didn't really prepare me for, for what was coming on this one. You know, the special tools, the the amount of torque on the on that crank pulley was ridiculous. Uh, I, you know, used muscles I've never used before on my back. <laughs> but yeah this one was a lot of fun uh, I'll, I'll say i'll call it fun um but i do hope it was helpful you know the whole point of the channel was for it to be diag related i hope that that was helpful the whole you know kind of like the comparing of the two uh, fuel pump uh, being disconnected one at a time you know that that was really the the main get takeaway for me on this one was you know when you're in a corner you're kind of like damn what test can i do and well this is just one of them now take it or leave it it's up to you uh i do appreciate all of you who have made it this far anyway uh, i appreciate every single one of you who, who take the time to watch my videos i mean uh it's because of you guys that i do this um and uh, I think I'll leave it at that. Obviously, we're going to give this the test of time. Um, we, you know, we're not just going to give the car away to the to the customer. Uh, if we recap real quick, the <laughs> check engine light was on, but there was no codes. Now, I could look for codes. Let's go back and see if there are any more codes. I've been going back and forth between live data and checking for codes. So we have no fault codes detected, but that doesn't matter because it didn't have codes to begin with. Um, until I started my testing. So that doesn't really matter at this point. What does matter is that there's no more restricted performance uh, warning on the dash. So we turn off the car, see that beautiful sky, and then we turn it on again, and immediately it would set off the restricted performance light. And now that's no longer happening. And another takeaway from this would be the live data. Uh, we did see it a little bit rich because of the, the sky high uh, fuel pressure compared to desired and it, and it gave us a little maybe like six percent if i remember correctly like six percent rich but here we see that it is within three percent i believe if i'm not mistaken let me just check one more time just for um accuracy 
Won't take long. We got short terms at 1.56%. Let me just put it how I put it last time. Let me go to fuel rail desired and short term fuel trim, long term fuel trim. Okay, so this was the sensor. Let's do it this way. Yeah, within 3%. Can't be that. And I've done a couple of, uh, of course, you always check. You do your VE test or whatever. You do your wide open run. Um, it didn't go lean at all. So I'm not worried. I, do, I can't tell you right now that this is how much pressure is supposed to have at idle. I can't tell you that. What I can tell you is that according to my fuel trims, we are within spec. We are doing gold. Like, we're, we're doing great. Thank you all for tuning in. Be sure to hit like, share if you'd like to. Comment, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. What did I miss? Of course, I always miss something, so be sure to let me know in the comment section. Um, I, if For those of you who wanted to see the nuts and bolts aspect of it, I, I do apologize. I, I will post up some pictures. Uh, hopefully, I, I did post some pictures for you guys. But um, let's keep it diag related. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you like what you see in these videos, I, I try to make them helpful. I try to make it so that you know they're easily digestible. Consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit that notifi uh, notification bell. And um, keep an eye out for anything that might come up in the near future. Thank you all again, and I will catch you all later. Till next time.